Hi to Miss Clayton's grade 5 class at GAA in Abu Dhabi. My name is Trilly and I am a glitter artist currently living in Toronto, Canada. And I'm here to talk to you today about passions. So to give you a bit of background about me, um, I'm a working artist. I work full time creating glitter art. I do different sort of portraits um, and different projects, different compositions using only glitter and glue. So how did I get started in this? Um, well, going back to childhood, I grew up in a ballroom dance family. So what that means is my parents were ballroom dancers and they both owned um, various uh, dance studios and taught ballroom dance classes. So they were doing this before I was born and I basically grew up exposed to this world. So it was a very creative world. Um, yeah, very creative world, very artistic world. And when I was a toddler, actually, they were um, often traveling across the U.S. to different ba uh, ballroom dance competition events. So I attended with them. There was one particular event in Vegas that I attended. And um, so in these ballroom dance competitions, all the dresses, all the costumes of the dancers are often adorned with Swarovski crystals, so like these rhinestones. And when I was a kid, I remember noticing that sometimes these crystals would fall off their dresses during the performances. So I ended up being the toddler who would run across the dance floor in between the dances and collect these crystals because they were sort of a treasure to me. And um, yeah, as a young kid, I was collecting them. I took them back to Canada with me and they became a staple in all my craft projects. I was always decorating everything, my toys, the walls with these crystals. So I guess I was always attracted to sparkly things since I was a child. Growing up, I was an only child, so I was often occupying my time alone by creating games and um, crafts and projects, and that's what I would pass the time with. Later in life, when I was around 15 years old, I started taking an interest in photography, and um, when I was in my photography phase, I started uh, I, I started wanting to incorporate my photography into artworks on canvas. So I came up with this idea where I would take my photography, put it on canvas, and then I would decorate it with paint and different objects like mixed media objects. And so I started using those crystals that I had. I had so many from childhood. I still had them like up until like 15 years old. I still had a collection of these crystals and I would attach them to the artworks that I made. I was um, starting to incorporate glitter as well because I liked things sparkly. I had a friend who um, opened up a shop nearby in the city and they had invited me to bring my artwork there to sell. So that was my first opportunity to take something that I created and um, like show it to the public and potentially sell it and make money from it. And I ended up being really successful with that project. So I was surprised that that my artwork was selling so much and then it became a thing. People really liked it, so I kept making it. So if I think about it, um, one of the first things that started to inspire me to do my artwork was the response that I was getting from other people and knowing and knowing that it was making people happy and that it was finding a home with somebody, with a, with a complete stranger. And I found that really fascinating how I was able to connect with different people through my artwork. Maybe a year or two into selling these artworks, I started taking the glitter and focusing on making um, artwork using just the glitter. So I made simple simple um, compositions at first, things like flowers and, I don't know, hearts, music notes, and the truth is I didn't sell a single one. I put them on display and it was like the first time that I, my artwork wasn't selling anymore. So the response from the public, I guess, like there was zero interest in the glitter artwork at that time. Moving on from, from I guess, that phase, I went I ended up going to university, studying at university. I studied film studies at Ryerson University in Toronto. 
And film studies is a lot of um, production work, so there's a lot of crew roles where you're working with other people, you're doing paperwork, you're doing um, camera work, editing, like production work as well. So a lot of organizing and planning different film shoots. After I graduated university, I ended up in the service industry working at bars and restaurants, and I didn't actually pursue my my degree or anything that I had been interested in doing since then. So what happens at some point in our lives I think is the the pressure of being an adult and having your own responsibilities and having to pay your bills. For me anyways that sort of hit me and I forgot sort of my passions at that time and it was like a few years of working in the industry that I was finding myself not fulfilled and not working towards my goals or my dreams. Although I was making money and I guess there was a comfortability there, there wasn't the fulfillment that I needed to get from life and that we all need to get when we feel like we contribute to something bigger. And so I decided to start making art again and that was the best decision that I ever made. I started painting. I didn't really have a plan for what I was going to do with my career, but I just sort of pursued the things that were making me happy and that were making me feel alive and gave me an opportunity to create and have, you know, every day feel new and fresh. So I had revisited the idea of my glitter art concept from back in the days. And what I realized is that you know, I, even though it didn't sell before, I was really like passionate about, about what I was doing. I had never seen anybody do glitter art before. There was something very attractive about it being something unique to me, something that I could develop from scratch. There was no rules, there was no guidebooks on how to do it, no YouTube videos I could watch. And that was really inspiring to me because I love the idea of just cr creating something from scratch, just developing something new. And that's what the glitter art gave me the opportunity to do is develop my own technique and and push the boundaries of what I thought was possible with glitter. It's all been a process of experimenting and, and, and trying to silence, I guess, the inner critic along the way. So what is a passion? And I guess a lot of people are still searching within themselves, what is their passion? So if you're asking yourself that, um, for me, a passion is something that makes you feel part of part of the flow of the world i feel like it's something that you that connects you to who you are and how it is integrated into the world around you it's something that is like a spark it's an energy force that is it, it's self-sustaining and it's always there something that when you're at the end of the day and you, you know, your stresses have subsided and, you know, everything's quiet. What is the thing that you start thinking about? And what is the thing that gives you um, an energy when you think about it that like starts getting your brain working, like gives you ideas on things you could experiment with? What is that thing that triggers that creative energy in you? It transcends the ego. It's not about what people think of you or, or what the other person, you know, deems to be good. It's just about yourself and it's about something that you challenge within yourself to get better and motivates you to grow and is naturally inspiring. What has motivated me to keep learning along the way? Um, of course, there are many setbacks along the way. What people see as my career now is not, has not been an easy road or, or just a straight road. You know, there's always been, been moments of maybe I won't do this anymore. Maybe I'll try this instead or I'm not good enough or, you know, all sorts of things. What people see is only really the, I guess, the successful outcomes, right? But what motivates me to keep learning along the way is... First of all, knowing that you never stop learning 
and always being open to learning more. I think that any time we get stubborn and think that we know everything we can know about a certain skill or concept or idea is that is the moment that we stop growing and then we stop um, yes yeah, we stop we close off our ability to receive new information and there's always room to grow and improve one of the things that I would recommend is developing a relationship with failure failure is never the enemy and a lot of people look at it as you know a letdown or um, you know they put a lot of pressure on themselves to avoid it and if we can have a relationship with failure where you're not worried about it because you understand that that is a, a wonderful learning opportunity so the thing about failure is that it humbles us if we if we let it it strips down the ego it it, it reveals to us what our true feelings about are about when we've disappointed ourselves or you know what how do we who are we really and, and how do we really feel about about that it's it's that opportunity through failure that we get to to take that mirror and look at ourselves and we can take the positives and, and you can look at it and say wow even through this failure this is the one thing that I still did and that can teach you something about yourself and, and what you're good at and where you have strength the other thing that I that really motivates us um, to keep learning is each other, is other people. We are all energy sources and we go through phases where that energy source is depleted from time to time. What we can do during those times are we can go out into nature. We can, you know, nature is a, a beautiful creator and there's so much inspiration in nature. So we can go outside and and draw inspiration from the world around us or we can try to connect with other people. So connecting with other people is a great opportunity to recharge our battery. When we have friends and we have loved ones, that have um, an abundance of creative energy they can share it with us and the goal is also for us to be able to reciprocate that when they're having um, a time where they're feeling more depleted so i think that's a reason why passion is so important because it's it's sort of that source to build your fire and to know how to build it so that we can recharge ourselves to to help elevate each other to help build the collective and inspire the collective what positive changes have happened around me since i have pursued my passions is first of all what positive change looks like to me is when things are flowing better in my life i would say the more aligned i am with the the things that i um am passionate about the things that ignite my soul the more that i'm aligned with that and doing those things and genuinely happy because of it um the more i i see that reflected in the world around me things manifest more fluidly around me which means I, you know, if, I, if there's something that I want to accomplish, the synchronicities uh, appear around me. I feel like the resources um, are more accessible. I meet somebody, um, a person who can help me with something else, you know, and there's this sort of cycle of the universe opening up and facilitating the things that I want to accomplish. And I view that as a positive change around me w through my artwork I have I've had the ability to connect with people from around the world and that I think is an amazing thing we have the technology we have the opportunities to connect with people that we otherwise never would have actually and I believe that that's one of my passions as well I feel very passionate about connecting with as many people as I can to help share the energy that I have about creating. When I have an abundance of creative energy, that that's 
my number one goal is how can I share this with other people and how can I help them, you know, on their journey to um, get through phases where they're feeling uninspired or searching for pathways to pursuing something that they're passionate about. And I think that that's a really important thing to identify what your gift to give to the world is. It is a service to other people and a service to yourself to be able to identify that because you are gonna be the most happy when you are acting on things that are aligned with your sole purpose, things that make you shine the brightest. So with that said, thank you for watching and I hope that my sharing about my passions today has inspired you to further identify what it is that you are passionate about and facilitate um, the pursuit of those passions and and I look forward to um, you know seeing all the positive changes and impacts that you are yet to have on the world.